In this video, I'm going to show you how to get your Emacs Tiny Hawk S quadcopter, micro quadcopter, working with your FlySky transmitter. It's going to involve installing a receiver, a FlySky receiver, so it's going to be a little bit of soldering. If you don't know how to solder, go check out my video or one of the thousands of videos about how to solder. It's really not very hard. You can do it with some basic equipment, but there is still a learning curve to it. Also, it's going to involve changing some settings on Betaflight. I'm going to go through the settings that I changed, and some of those are just kind of personal preference, but some of them you definitely have to do in order to get your FlySky radio uh, working from the normal you know, instead of the normal settings with the uh, FR Sky receiver that is installed on the quadcopter here. All right, let's get started. All right, so first let me just give you the super duper simple version. Um, and especially if you kind of already know what you're doing, what you're going to want to do is connect your signal wire on your receiver to RX1. That At least that's what I did. I connected it to RX1 and then you're going to want to find a, fi a positive 5 volt pad and a negative pad and then that's pretty much all you have to do as far as the soldering side, the hardware side, and then you can just skip past all the rest of the stuff I'm going to talk about and just go into the uh, go to the beta flight side. Now if you want just a little bit more detail, um, I wanted to do more of like a tutorial like step-by-step -step video but it just kind of didn't work out like that because I was kind of like trying to figure out what I was doing and I did some stuff wrong so uh, just to make it more con concise I'm just going to tell you now so this receiver I don't actually recommend getting this receiver because well for one it doesn't come with any wires or anything to actually hook it up which that's not very cool I don't know why they would send it to me without the wires because um, most do most have connectors and you know wires and stuff um, but the other thing is I haven't heard very good reviews about this so I would recommend uh, either the FLI 14 plus receiver or the newer version of this receiver that I'm using maybe I'll put links to uh, to those in the description in any case this one I've been using this one and it, it, it seems to work decently for like flying around the yard because it didn't come with any wires what I did is I just took a uh, a servo lead from an old destroyed servo and I cut that apart and then I uh, stripped the ends off of the wire and I tinned the wire which is to say I just added some solder to them and then I tinned the pads on the uh, receiver and the flight controller where I was going to hook it up to. Now, here's the thing. One thing is I did kind of screw up and I did not uh, tin the right ones because I just, I got confused. And uh, so I messed that up. And so, but I fixed it. I fixed it later. So I got it on the right one. So you want the five volt, the negative, and then you want the um, I bus. As far as connecting the receiver to the quadcopter uh, flight controller there, I originally tried to connect it on the S bus pads, but um, that didn't work for some reason. I thought it would work, but it it doesn't. So I ended up just using the, the positive and negative S bus uh, pads like on the little S bus section. Um, but that's, so that's just positive and negative to, uh, to power the receiver. And then I actually took the signal wire and attached that to the RX-1 uh, pad. So I soldered that to the RX-1 pad and that's what I'm going to be using. So now what we're going to do is actually put this into bind mode and see if we can bind it up with my transmitter just to see if that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down this tiny little button, this little button right there. I'm going to hold this down as I plug in the battery. And now you can see it's blinking rapidly, blinking green rapidly. So that should mean that it's in bind mode. I have my transmitter here. This is the FSI6X from FlySky. And I already have a new uh, model profile. I'm going to hold down the bind key and I'm going to power on the transmitter. Oh, I'm going to put my switches in the up position, still holding down the bind key. And it says RX binding. Hmm, I'm not you it should it should say bound so I'm not getting anything but this receiver did stop blinking rapidly so maybe it's maybe it's actually working so I'm gonna put all this back together and then we're gonna head over into beta flight and change some configuration things and get this thing actually flying and then I added some heat shrink tubing and then when I put it back into the quadcopter, I just kind of tucked it right behind the camera. It seems to work pretty well and I don't think anything has overheated yet. 
so it, there should be some decent airflow through there. And then what I did is actually I took the uh, the VTX antenna, the video transmitter antenna, and I just had that thing um, sticking out of the top there, as you can see. So I uh, I thought maybe that would help give me better signal, and then it would also kind of keep it away a little bit away from the uh, actual receiver antenna, which I just kind of stuck out the bottom. Before we even get into Betaflight, I'm going to get my transmitter here and set it up like how I always set it up and you've probably seen this before in other videos but we'll go ahead and do it uh, right now just to make sure that you are familiar with, and because this is going to affect how the beta flight settings are like the switches that I assign and all that sort of stuff so we're going to press and hold OK to go into the system setup let's see here let's go down to Actually, shoot, I don't even remember what I do on this side. Uh, let's see. One thing I, I like to do is program the failsafe in the transmitter just as a backup. Um, so failsafe channel 3, we're going to select that. And let's see, because you can see it's moving on the bar right there. And this is the throttle, so we're going to uh, select on, and then we're going to press and hold cancel. Press and hold cancel, go back in, make sure it's negative 100. That's good. Honestly, I don't even know if it really makes much of a difference, but it seems like a good idea to have as like a backup. So here we have aux switches. We want to make sure that they're all turned on, and they are. We're going to go into the functions setup. We're going to go to aux channels, and I'm going to, let's see, let's scroll through these. So you'll notice it starts at 5. We're going to change uh, channel 5 to switch A. Channel 6 to switch B, channel 7 to switch C, channel 8 switch D, and then uh, channel 9 to variable A. Oops, I'll get that in a second. Uh, variable B, and let's go back and make that variable A. There we go. All right, and yep, okay, let's go back in. And that's what we got. So what that's going to look like in Betaflight is this is going to be aux 1, aux 2, aux 3, aux 4, aux 5, and aux 6. So we have 6 aux channels and then 10 channels total. And you should be able to do this exact same kind of thing if you have the upgraded uh, version, like the upgraded firmware on the FSI 6, uh, which I have a video out uh, showing you how to do that if that's something that you want to do. One more thing I want to check actually is the with the RX setup we go to output mode this is how my transmitter is set up on the output mode and that's it so let's get into let's uh, get a laptop and connect our quadcopter to beta flight all right so we've got beta flight going we've got our USB cable connected to our laptop and I'm going to plug in the quadcopter like so, it's gonna pop up here. There we go, and I'm going to hit connect. Now, I have already gone through here to try and kind of figure out what I needed to change, so some things have already been changed, but I'll, I'll be sure to let you know you know, the, what they need to be changed to, but just, just know in case it doesn't look just like yours, that's why. So first thing we want to do is go into the ports tab, and then you want on the UART1, with the way that I've soldered the receiver up, you want to select serial RX and you want it to look, you know, look like this. Serial RX on that one and then hit save and reboot. So I'll just do that just to so you can kind of follow along. And we'll reconnect it. And then we're going to go to the configuration tab and we're going to scroll down here and for the receiver, I'm going to select serial based receiver so Specs that S bus some D. So select that one and then select from the drop down menu I bus. And I think what I'm going to do, and I'll annotate this if I'm wrong, but I'm going to change the arming angle to 180 so that I can arm no matter the position that the quad is in, like in case I get stuck in a tree or something and I need to arm it to kind of get myself out. So I'm going to set that to 180. Um, and we'll see how that goes. I'm going to hit save and reboot again. And I, once it shows back up there, okay, I'm going to click connect once once more. Let's see, we're going to skip PID tuning. 
but just to show you what mine looks like, it looks like that. Now it does have, it says say profile two on here, but I know profile, it should be profile one for one S and two for two S I believe. So I don't plan on flying this on two S for a little while. So hopefully that is, hopefully that's not the default, but it's just, that's what shows up right there. And just for the record, this is what it looks like on the PID profile one. So anyway, uh, so now we want to go down to receiver. And at this point, um, we'll go ahead and plug in a battery to the quad copter. Um, now remember, you always want to be careful anytime you're plugging a battery into your quad copter and you have propellers on. So um, if this was like a five inch, I would definitely take the propellers off. I'm gonna leave them on on here because they're very difficult to get off. Um, and if everything's working properly, you shouldn't even be able to arm the quadcopter while it's connected to the uh, USB. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on my transmitter here. And boom, look at that. You can see, okay, and it's beeping because the beeper is getting set off. Can I change that? Is there one of these switches? Okay, no, it's not. All right, so just deal with the beeping for a second here. But So you can see we have controls, which is good. And um, actually, okay, you, what you need to do, it's very important here in channel map, you need to change that to AETR123. At least I think it's important. That's what I changed it to because that's what the channel map is for this, for, for FlySky. So change that to AETR1234. Click save at the bottom down there. Now let's get rid of that beeping and get into the modes tab. Now the modes tab, <clears throat> you can see here, uh, if I flip my arming switch on aux one, they do have arm set to aux one, and you can see the little hash mark, the little tick mark, jumps between 1,000 and 2,000. So, what I want to do is have it on my transmitter. Again, sorry about the beeping. Is that I want the arm switch aux one right here or channel five? I want this to be armed, so up to be armed. So what I'm going to do is drag this little box, the little scroll bar over to where the tick mark is, and that's gonna be armed. So basically the way I have it set up is a th 1000 is armed for these two position switches. 1000 is armed, which means the switch is up, and uh, and then like 2000 is gonna be switched down. So let's just, let's get over to this beeper and get rid of this. So we're gonna set the beeper to aux five, and let's just hit save. So let's, there we go, okay. Whew. All right, so right now I have aux five set up to this uh, rotating wheel. I mean the variable A. So there we go. So now I can get it to beep if I want it to. And I just have it set on that because I'm not really going to use the vari variable wheel thing for anything else. Good. So it does have a beeper. That's nice. Um, so then let's go back up here. So angle, we're going to set that to aux three. And aux three is going to be my three position switch here right there. So what I'm going to do is when it's in the lowest position, that's going to be angle mode. And then I'm going to get rid of horizon mode entirely. It's not very useful. Um, and then let's see, where's my uh, acro train? Okay, so acro trainer, add range. Acro trainer is also going to be aux three. And that's going to be in the middle position, so 1500. So look at that. And then the all the way forward position, I'm not going to have anything set, and that's going to go default to acro mode. So this way, I've got angle mode, acro trainer, which I actually haven't tried out yet, but I think it will be useful uh, for for anybody trying to learn. And then we're going to go full acro. So I like to use the three position switch as my um, kind of flight mode selector switch. Okay, now uh, flip over after crash. We're going to set that to aux 2. I have that uh, on this switch here. And then when it's up, I want, it, I want it to be active. So I'm going to drag the scroll bar over to 1000. And then, let's see here. Let's see, check through this. So we have our beeper, um, arm. Yeah, I think that's all. really all you need. And then of course you can play with the other modes if you want. We're gonna hit save. Yeah, hit save. And that should be it. Well, let's take a look at our OSD. 
Um, again, I'm not going to mess with any of like the other stuff or like I'm not going to mess with the uh, rates right now because I just kind of want to see what it's like straight out of the box. And so let's see, we've got our stuff here. And I'm not sure about this board, but I'm guessing like with other boards, you probably have to have the battery connected in order to activate the OSD chip and uh, and actually make changes to the OSD. So we're going to we'll just do that right now. Um, and just kind of show you just in case you've never done that before so we can drag these things around the screen and let's put the battery voltage like up here let's put tiny hawk down here and I'm not quite sure how these are going to fit onto the goggles so I'll just kind of I won't put them all the way towards the edge I'm going to put RSSI value on here just because I want to see uh, what it does with this uh, receiver. So I'm guessing it won't work, but let's just put it on there anyway. And we're going to go down here and we're going to click save. We'll just leave it at the default font. So we're going to save this. Everything is saved. I think we're good to go. We are going to, uh, we're going to now disconnect from Betaflight. We're just going to unplug everything to give it a fresh start. Let's see if we can get uh, get the responses that we want to with this thing. Just kind of on the bench here. We'll do some probably more flying around either later in this video or in another video. But let's just connect this and see if we get what we want. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to hold this down right now. Ooh, it does arm. All right. So it arms. Okay, good. That's a different sound. All right, excellent. Oh man, I can't wait to fly this thing. Wait, let's see. Okay, let's see if I can hover this thing. Ooh. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, if I think of anything else that you need to know, check the description uh, and I'll put it there. And also stay tuned for more videos coming out. In another video, I'm gonna go into more detail about just kind of the, the different settings that I uh, changed on here in Betaflight and the different rate settings because uh, I've been kind of playing around with those and trying to get them to fly a little bit more like my uh, five-inch quad that I'm used to flying. Have an awesome day.